Welcome back to the Kennedy Dynasty Podcast. I'm your host, Allison, and today I have a very special episode for you. If you remember a while back, I posted a throwback episode from when I talked about John and Carolyn's relationship, and I asked you to listen to it to refresh your memory for a special interview that was coming up, and that's what I have for you today. I got to speak with Emily Giffen, and she is the author of several amazing best-selling novels, one of which was actually made into one of my very favorite movies, Something Borrowed. She's written another incredible book inspired by John and Carolyn, and I really enjoyed speaking with her. So I hope you enjoy our conversation. Here I am joined by number one New York Times bestselling author Emily Giffen to talk about her newest book, Meant to Be. Emily, thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, it's such a pleasure. Thank you for having me. I am thrilled. I love this book so much, so I can't wait to ask you. I've got so many more questions than I can ask that I don't want to spoil, So, but I will ask what I can. Um, to get started, will you please take us through your inspiration to write the characters Joe and Kate based on John and Carolyn, and what about them inspired you to write this story? Sure. Well, probably like you, I grew up very interested in the Kennedys. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing your mother or father or someone, you know, older in your life kind of introduced you to the the whole Kennedy dynasty. Is that how yes, it happened for you? that's true. The, it was my grandfather. Yeah. Yeah, that's how it was for me. For it was it was my mother. And um, you know, there were just always magazines and pictures and books. And she told me the stories about just, you know, the family in general. I knew the cousins' names and um, you know, of course, the the cornerstone of that all was John and you know, President Kennedy and Jackie. And she told me about, you know, her she was watching a soap, she was in high school and she was watching, she was a senior in high school and watching her soap opera when Walter Cronkite interrupted her her, you know, her daily soap opera with this bulletin that President Kennedy had been shot. And, you know, I'd heard all of those stories and was aware of this whole notion of the Kennedy curse. Um, and the, you know, the, 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 all the tragedies that had befallen the family. And so fast forward, as I grew older, um, I went to law school. Part of the reason I chose UVA, University of Virginia, was because, you know, Kennedy's had gone there. And I went to law school and then graduated and moved to the city. And this was during the um, mid you know, nineties. Um, I think I, I, let's see, I graduated in 97, but, um, John was, uh, had started George magazine by then and was dating Carolyn. And it was just, I think we all, I certainly, anyone who sort of followed the Kennedys, we pinned a lot of hopes on, on, um, John and Carolyn sort of providing this happily ever after fairy tale that, um, you know, the, the the family had, that it had looted the, the family or certainly had looted his father, and mother, um, who, you know, passed away of cancer years before this. And so we just pinned all these hopes and we really wanted it to be this, you know, happily ever after story. And I know that's how I felt. And when I got to the city, you know, I remember being thrilled with the idea that you could at any moment run into them, um, you know, rollerblading in the park or, you know, down at, um, you know, Bubby's or El Teddy's in Tribeca, you sort of knew where they hung out. You were always like a one or two degree, you know, Mm -hmm. two degrees of separation from them. Of course it didn't, you know, it didn't work out like that. I was, um, I've read about on my author's note that I, uh, was out in the Hamptons in a you know crowded chair with my friends and woke up in the basement a little hung over and the coverage of the crash was on and I didn't catch who it was at first and when I sort of woke up and realized it was it was John and Carolyn and Carolyn's sister Lauren on the way to Rory's wedding I just it was in a state of shock I think you know we all were and I just kept I don't I didn't leave the basement that day I mean maybe to go upstairs and get something to eat but like I certainly wasn't out on the beach because I just was glued to the television just waiting to see like I thought for sure he would just come out of the surf with this story like he's always like this mischievous grin and this and this story of how he, you know, he was treading water for hours and you knew as the hours passed that that wasn't going to happen, but I definitely clung to that hope for a long time. And I think the seeds of, of what if really started around then. And, you know, shortly thereafter of like, gosh, what would have happened if they had, you know, if they hadn't perished in that terrible accident, or if he hadn't taken the plane that night, or if she had talked him out of it, or all of the millions of what ifs. And so from there, I thought, over the years, this is my 11th novel. um, And I've been writing something Bard came out in 2004. So this is almost 20 years of publishing. And I thought intermittently about, about telling a fictionalized 
account of this couple or something based on the Kennedys. And it just felt like the right moment in time for, for me. I had been, you know, we've we've all been enduring this 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 pandemic and you know this it's just been incredibly dark time for a lot of us and i thought i want to escape to the 90s i want to go back to this to the to the to my you know my carefree time in my life when i was in my 20s and practicing law um and living in the city and just write set a book during this time and from there i came up with the characters of that was a very long-winded background <laughs> i love it and and honestly this book did provide such a good escape from me it, like it was a good i read it while i was at the beach and it was just a really good like escape into that world so i loved it yeah. i totally well, get good. what you mean by that um also i was i was thinking while you were saying you were in such a, such a state of shock i was talking to my mom literally i think two or three days ago. And I asked her, I was like, do you remember when JFK Jr.'s plane was missing? She said, oh my God, yes. She said it literally was unbelievable. She was like, it was like, you didn't believe it at all. Like that's not supposed to happen, you know? Couldn't believe it. And of course it was just a couple of years after um, Diana had died in the tunnel mm-hmm. and the car crash. So it was like, no, this can't be, you know, happening again to this, you know, iconic sort of fairy tale like Right. Figure. It just, there's no way that it could, it could happen. Um, and then when you factor in all of the things around, you know, Jackie never wanting him, making him promise that he wouldn't fly planes. And mm-hmm. you just thought like it was, it, it, it couldn't be happening. But right. that said, I mean, you asked about Joe and, and Kate, the, Joe Kingsley and, and Kate Cooper in my book. And they're um, definitely, you know, inspired by this, this famous couple, but they're very, um, they're very much their own people. And particularly Kate is, is, is there's so many differences in who, my character compared to Carolyn. And one of them is her, um, you know, troubled background. I mean, mm-hmm. we all have, we all have dark aspects of our past. I'm sure Carolyn probably did too, but, um, you know, by any measure, she was very, I know, upper middle class. She had a surgeon stepfather, um, I think he's an orthopedic surgeon and, you know, she was grew up in Greenwich and she attended college. And, um, so the Kate, Kate came from sort of a, well, a, a very troubled background. She didn't go to college. She had a single mother and who, a, a sort of awful stepfather. So very different in, in many ways, but this whole concept of the, this, you know, America's son, this, um, the most eligible bachelor in the country from a very glamorous, connected political, um, family in the book, uh, Joe Kingsley's father was an, was an astronaut and a Senator, but he, you know, astronauts at the time you talk to your, your parent and I talked to my parents about that and they were like rock stars. I mean, they mm-hmm. were like presidents. So there was more similarities as far as the characters of Joe and John go than, than Kate and Carolyn. But, um, you know, it's just sort of a jumping off point. And from there you create these characters and you get in their own, their, their heads and their stories and their backstories. And, um, from there, it really was, you know, it's, it's, it's very much fiction, but it was fun because although it is, is fiction and these characters are, you know, a figment of my imagination, it was fun to add the details into the story of, for example, places that they had spent time, the, you know, the, the, the real John and Carolyn, where they had gone to out to eat and, you know, some details about, Carolyn always wore this signature red lipstick and Kate wore that too. So it was fun to add those details, um, sort of a nostalgic nod and paying homage to this couple for, for those like you, obviously, who, who know all about the couple and know all those backstories that they'll recognize things in it. Um, and if you don't know a thing about the Kennedys, it, it doesn't matter. It just, you know, you know, those little details will be lost on you, but it will in no way interrupt the flow of your reading experience. I Absolutely. Guess. Yeah. It was, they were such fun little Easter eggs in there. It was very obvious that you were, you know, interested in the Kennedy family too, because there was some kind of some like deep historical nods in there for sure. Um, did you like fact check any of that or research for that? Or were you just able to drop it in the book whenever it fit? It kind of, uh, you know, I've, I'm like you, I mean, I don't have a Kennedy dynasty podcast, but it sure would be fun to have one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, you're you welcome know, anytime. <laughs> oh, thank you. Anytime you have a guest cancel or something, I'll, I'll hop on and 
discuss any aspect of that family with you, but you know, I knew enough that it wasn't really, and because it was fiction, I didn't really have to do any research. Um, that said, I did reread, um, a couple of my one of favorite books, just really more, not so much based on research, but just because I was kind of going down that mental rabbit hole a lot in the in the beginning of especially when I first sat down to write the book. Um, you know, I'm just remembering all these stories and you know, of his uh his I can't remember, it might have been his 21st birthday, it's his 18th birthday in the book, but there was a paparazzi incident. And so some of those things are that I, I reread, but because it's fiction and because it's a novel, it, it didn't have to, there was nothing really that I needed to fact check. It was more just for, for fun, for me, for, um, to sort of, you know, go back over these, these characters in the past. And while wow, it was so, it's such a golden time in so many ways. I think it's dangerous in a way to, to think about past decades with too much of rose colored glasses you know, we think about the nineties and it seems simpler it was pre nine 11 and, you know, it was pre social media. So people were more interactive. You, 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 you think of it that way. You think of it as, Oh, this is before, you know, Instagram and everything else. Um, but there were things about the nineties that I had to remind myself as I was writing it that were, um, you know, suboptimal compared to today, like the me too movement hadn't happened. I think of how, um, demonized Monica Lewinsky was uh, for her affair with um, Bill Clinton. And I think now she would have been viewed much more as a victim than this seductress, you know? Um, anyway, that's kind of, I'm kind of going off on no, a tangent. I actually but, talk about that all the time. My husband do. and I talk about that all the time. Yes, because it's such a thing like back in my day in the sixties, everything was great. It's like, yeah, uh, there wasn't yeah, yeah. equal rights for people yeah, at right, all. Like right. there was literally segregation. So, yeah. you know, there's, there's terrible moments in every right, right. period, but there's also beautiful moments in every period too, you know? Exactly. Exactly. And as long as you sort of in interviews like this, you know, I'd always like want to just add the footnote. Like I'm like, you know, there's a lot of things that we're making progress on, but, um, for purposes of writing this book and putting, you know, creating these settings and it was more, it was just remembering some of the, what felt like simpler, sweeter times and in, in, in some ways. Absolutely. One of the things that I just really admired in the writing of this book is the humanizing of this love story. You just showed two people fall in love, not because of like the idea of someone, but just the essence of someone, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. So it was very just true to really an authentic relationship. So how yeah. did you sculpt the idea of, you know, Joe and Kate, who they were obviously, or he was mostly a celebrity in the book and stuff. How did you sculpt this mega celebrity inspired love right. story and make it so real and normal and relatable? Well, th thank you. Also, by the way, I love your voice. It's such oh, a thank good, you. <laughs> such a great podcast voice. Thank you. Um, you know, the one of the reasons that I did choose to set it in the 90s, apart from the nostalgia element that we've talked about, is because it was pre-social media when I think stars and celebrities were less accessible. So there was more like mystique almost around them because they couldn't, you know, ch channel what they were doing. All and, and in some ways, there were fewer celebrities so the people who were famous were even more famous so unless you were like around at that time i guess the the the, the extreme example of that is you you know I, I wasn't around for this but when you talk about then the beatles came on the ed sullivan show like the, everyone in america was watching the ed sullivan show we were all watching you know they were all watching that the beatles perform and so they became they were so much more famous because they weren't like a hundred different shows and TikTok and all these different things going on. So by putting it in the nineties, they became even, you know, Joe was even more famous, I think, than, than he might be today because things are diluted a bit, if that makes sense. Yeah. But to your point about the authenticity about their relationship, I did spend a lot of time thinking about, you know, if you were to meet someone who was your childhood idol or someone that you, you know, thought was that you knew of before they knew you, like, what would that be like? And I thought there's probably, there's a good number of people in the world who are, you know, opportunistic or they want to be famous or they, they might love the idea of dating someone who was famous for the, like, just for the sake of being famous. And the character of Kate 
which I think I always, I get the feeling, of course, I didn't know her and I don't know anyone who knew her. I've read accounts, but my understanding of Carolyn was that she, she, she didn't like that part of being with John. Like it was, it was hard for her. Like she didn't, she genuinely wanted to lead, lead a private life. And, and, and that's not in the way that some people say, oh, they want a private life, but they really don't. Um, she really genuinely wanted that. And Kate had that feeling. She loved Joe in spite of how famous he was, not because of that. Like that was a, that was an obstacle in their relationship. That was a challenge. That was something they had to like work on and get through. And without giving spoilers, it was, you know, I mean, it, it was not something that she relished at all. And it, when you throw on top of it that she was very insecure about her background, I mean, I think even if you went to a similar school, even if you went to Harvard with the Joe character or you were, you know, from a similarly connected family or, you know, even if you had all of that on your resume, so to speak, or those boxes checked, I still think it would be challenging to be with someone where the whole world is like compare, like, oh, is she good enough? Is she pretty enough? Is she smart enough? Is she, you know, should he be with someone quote unquote better? But when you throw on top of it that she had all these insecurities and she hadn't, you know, gone to college and she, she didn't, you know, have, uh, she, we don't, I guess, need to delve into all of the aspects of her family that were kind of embarrassing to her, but there were a lot. When you, when you add that in, I think it would be incredibly challenging to be in that relationship. You would, your insecurities would just be so heightened. And so I really tried to get in her head and, and try to feel what, you know, what, what one would feel if the whole world was like, oh, she's not good enough. You know, she, she's not good enough. So I think I appreciate you saying that it felt so authentic, but I, I think um, that that's because in many ways I was writing about just the way you would feel rather than, than the, the famous aspect, if that makes yeah, sense. It totally does. And it was beautifully done. I got one more question for you. So this, obviously the story just in a million different ways, just pulls at your heartstrings. And one of the storylines that really touched me was Barry's. So without giving away too much about her, I'm curious who inspired this character. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I love Barry. So thank you for saying that. Um, Barry in the book is uh, Joe's best friend dating back to the seventh grade. And there really is no one person it, uh, that, that I would say was the real life Barry, but she was in many ways an amalgam. You know, obviously John uh, Kennedy had an older sister, Caroline. And so, and she always seemed very, she still seems very sensible, very smart very grounded. And so, and, and the, she, Barry has those qualities. So she's very kind of like a sister figure, like a Caroline type figure, but she's not a sister. So there's like, you know, it's, they're not related. So there's, you know, it's, it's a, it's a friendship. So that was different in some ways, in some ways she's like Anthony, you know, his cousin who passed I away. I thought that. Yeah. I yeah. Totally did that. you get that vibe? Like I did. He, that was someone that he just always like trusted and shared that had that background with. I mean, Joe has cousins in the book. Barry um, was his closest friend and, and sounding board and, and a, a foil for him in the story as well. But I loved her and I'm glad you did too. Oh, I totally did. Well, this book is truly my favorite of the year by far. So everybody go get this book. I'm going to put a direct link to purchase in the description of this episode read it, love it, promise everybody will. Um, thank you, Emily, so, so much for speaking with me today. I really appreciate it. It was such a pleasure. Thank you. And I love that we sh we have this shared love of the Kennedys. Thank it's, you. It, it's too. like an automatic bond, isn't it? It is. I'm telling you that you can always just form a conversation as long as you know a little bit about them for sure. <laughs> thank you so much. Thanks for listening. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss when the next episode comes out. It's the one where Dr. Natalia Molina and I recapped and chatted about Louis Bayard's new book, Jackie and Me. And it was a super fun conversation. So you don't want to miss out on that, especially if you participated in reading that book along with us. Make sure you're following me on Instagram at Kennedy Dynasty. And as always, it helps me so much if you will just take a second and leave a positive written review on Apple Podcasts. And if you can't do that or don't want to do that, at least bop it five stars and that would help me so, so much. I hope you have a great week and I'll talk to you soon. Come on and vote for Kennedy, vote for Kennedy, keep America strong.